is largely being used by the terrorists for these purposes, communication, coordination and things, uh, as of now. So but this, this but the threat in being of utilization of these uh, for other purposes that were mentioned cannot be ruled out. Because we, we also know Al-Qaeda's electronic jihad in which they have these ele electronic jihad battalions and they use them for recruitment, for radicalization. In fact, they run uh, ele electronic courses on cyber warfare. There is an elect electronic college of jihad, etc. But we'll come to that later. Kamal, I want to ask you specifically that the violence, Assam violence that took place uh, last month and the month before, how was that affected by the use of, by the malicious use of the social media? In fact, our Home Secretary R.K. Singh even said that some of the internet users, providers rather, were based in Pakistan. You see, it's a, something very difficult to come to a very definitive conclusion. It's primarily because in cyberspace, attribution is uh, extremely difficult. Because cyberspace and the way at internet was designed was to uh, promote it gives, you anonymity. An it gives you anonymity. Promote anonymity. That was, the in, in fact, the intent. But now the uses that it has been put to, internet today, as I said, for shopping, for everything conceivable in life. Government is using it for delivery of services, as you mentioned, defense also, logistics suppliers and so on. They're all connected. Everybody is depending on that. So the uses have far exceeded what it was actually designed for. And social medium is another thing which has emerged on the scene. So applications is what we say that the economy will grow if you promote more and more application. So internet and globalization are being used for promoting that. So how was the social media used to exacerbate communal tensions during uh, the Assam violence? You see, the point which I would like to make here is that it is the intelligence which has to actually keep on monitoring this. Monitoring not in the sense of looking at what the content is going, but looking at the kind of traffic which is emerging where. Are there peaks of traffic? Are there reasons for generation of that traffic? In which parts where? It is this new kind of ability that we have to create among our intelligence agencies that is, that is going to be able to handle this rather than trying to control the social media and uh, put a curb on their usage. The way, for example, uh, the sending out of the SMS messages uh, was reduced. Number of messages were reduced to 15 or 20 bulk messages and so on. For example, banks keep using it all the time for genuine uses, lawful uses. But only recently the Pune cyber cell uh, of the police arrested a number of people who had uploaded these, uh, the, those Burma riot uh, yes. Picked um, uh, on the URL, and um, and they found there was a whole network of people who were doing this. Definitely, and in fact, this was going on well before this. Somewhere in early July, somebody from uh, Karachi also reported that he was seeing all this kind of a thing. That is, it was the build-up was there. Images were getting morphed, and they were circulating. So, one so you one you are talking about surveillance that the intelligence agencies must must keep a watch on on the traffic. But do you believe that we have learned the lessons from the Assam episode? I think uh, it's, it's too early to comment on this. As uh, Charyan said about social media, we have to allow it to grow to a level of maturity. Likewise, I think intelligence also will take quite a while. It's a new kind of a thing that we have to do. In the case of military and in the case of all of these, we require new kind of people to be working in these agencies. Whether we can change the uh, uh, change the methods of working of a military soldier into a cyber geek, probably difficult. Likewise, in the traditional intelligence, whether we can expect them to do this kind of a thing or you will have to induct uh, uh, freshers, we graduates. Have, we should have learned some lessons from Arab Spring, some lessons from London riots, some lessons now for what's happened uh, I, in the Islamic world. Yes, I agree. I agree. We are seeing very disastrous results of the Arab Spring also. So government also has to master the usage of the Arab uh, Spring kind of techniques. Social media, technology can be used both by the terrorists as well as by the governments to control them. Uh, Charyan, let's come to the offensive part about hacking. Now I'm told the Chinese have been very active in their uh, hacking operations. 
number of Chinese companies have targeted the United States. Chinese uh, espionage rings have actually, actually broke into uh, the Lockheed Martin F-35 stealth technology. They even broke the RSA codes and got in. And not just that, so the Chinese are involved investing a lot of money on this cyber aggression to get secrets, business secrets, uh, operational secrets, defense secrets. How far have they attacked India? Well, um even the Americans can't say for a hundred percent that it was A, the Chinese, B, if it was the Chinese, whether it was the Chinese military. Again, or this question of anonymity. anonymity. And uh, many, many mechanisms ex exist in cyberspace to, to pretend that you're, you're, you're attacking from some place that you're not from. So uh, uh, even in the case of India, um, it's only by inference. I mean, who would want to attack? That it's, it's, it's no, but a there, case of there, there is this <laughs> instance, I'm, I'm told, that uh, the, they have hacked into the Eastern Naval Command, or so, so, the, so I, 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 I've read, uh, the, 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 the uh, computers at Vishakhapatnam, because INS Arihant, our uh, nuclear missile submarine, was carrying out certain tests there. And uh, they've done that, and I believe that they've also tried to hack our MOD uh, nets. Can I? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> actually, uh, China has uh, been developing this workforce, cyber workforce, for a long time now. Since 1999, uh, they have been involved in establishment of uh, these universities, uh, which are to teach this uh, cyber, this thing. And they have attempted these, like you said, about F-35, uh, this uh, Lockheed Martin's uh, this thing and thereafter in August 2011 the US itself said that uh, warned China that they are indulging in cyber spying and for which they have created a, a force of about 180,000 people out of which 150,000 are supposed to be non-militia and uh, 30,000 So of that's fear. a large force. Kamal, one mm -hmm. last yeah. word from you. Yeah, you see if you look at the naval command case where the uh, data was getting out to IP addresses located in China. Now this naval command is totally air gapped. By that I mean that the it is an intranet which is not connected to the internet. But data has to move back and forth between what they are doing and to the other, other organizations. Now normally we use USB sticks. Now these USB drives they are the ones which are infected. So this USB drive will go to the intranet of the naval network, collect some data for legitimate purpose, then the person is taking it out. Now, he has infected with the pre-infected virus on this USB and stick. And that transmits? That the transmits. Back to the IP. This is how, in fact, Stuxnet was used in Iran also. The network was fully okay. unconnected. Well, on, on that Stuxnet in, in, in Iran, it's a very interesting anecdote that when whoever did it, they did not do it through the internet. Yes. They in fact put the virus into computers that were controlling the spinning of the centrifuge rods. They infected the Stuxnet into those computers. Those co computers, after having been infected, resulted in the malfunctioning. Yeah. The speed of the uh, spinning Cent change, yeah. the uh, centrifuge rods collapsed. Yeah. And this was, I am told, a very brilliant operation. It took something like 1,000 man years to perfect. And whoever did it, did a good job. But coming back to the Chinese, the Chinese have targeted um, uh, the ENC, as Kamala said. But Pakistanis have also been very much involved in this. Pakistanis are known to have hacked about 110 government of India. Uh, nets, websites, uh, how far this is true. You see, this is where I would like to interject here. Just 30 seconds. You have to protect your own networks. Yeah. So you have to implement best security practices, get them audited internally. Best audits, so that by the audits, we get to understand the vulnerabilities. Right, are. right. So on, on, on that note, that our first priority 
must be our in-house cyber security yes. and the protection of our own websites. Yes. Uh, well, th on that note of caution, we'll end this program. A slew of measures are being put in place to ensure that cyberspace is adequately protected as we just heard that is the first property uh, priority this protection has to be against individuals and organizations that are inimical to our na national interests equally as we've heard from our panelists the defense and security of the country must not be allowed to be undermined by the enemy cyber activity what the chinese are doing or the pakistanis might be doing that's all for now Thanks for defense watching. Till same time, next time, goodbye and namaskar.